Are you having any difficulty with the CCS cases of the step 3 exam? Not anymore. And during the video, I will introduce you to the platform, how to approach your CCS case, and how to place the different orders. If you'd like to see more examples of the CCS cases being solved and how to approach the biostatistics and the abstracts of the step 3 exam, make sure to check out our biostatistics and CCS course that I'll leave the link for in the description below. And now, let's get started. We will start the case. At the beginning of the case, you'll get the case introduction, which gives you a brief idea about the case 43 year old male presents to the office because of two day history of excruciating pain in the first metatarsal phalangeal joint of his right foot patient is walking with a limb favoring his left leg reading this we start getting an idea of the differential diagnosis since this has been going on for two days that means it's not urgent or emergent that requires emergency orders or going to the ed so this is an outpatient encounter that is not urgent or emergent so we'll click OK and get the vital signs, which might give us an idea about acquiring something to be done. Uh, we'll main things to look at are the temperature, especially with the joint pain. If you're suspicious of septic arthritis, we see that the patient is uh, does not have any fever. The pulse slightly on the higher side, but not very high, 82. The respiratory rate is 16. Very important, the blood pressure to assess stability. Here we have 128 over 75, the height and weight and the BMI. We'll click OK and we will get the full history. 43 year old male uh, presents to the office with two day history of excruciating pain in the first metatarsophalangeal joint of his right foot. So one thing to keep in mind, you don't have to read every single word that is included in the history. You can screen quickly to the important stuff and you can skip the things that you feel are not as important. This is uh, a skill that you will get with time as uh, happens with you reading the exam questions exam questions are very long and most of the time you don't have to write to read every single word in the question stem the pain started two days ago great toe progressively worsened now it's eight nine uh, aggravated by moving early in the morning uh, there's extensive swelling deny similar episodes in the past no fever or chills that's very important to know that this is unlikely to be septic arthritis there has been no history of morning stiffness tick bites for lime rashes or trauma to the joint which could be causing pain usually drinks alcohol very important for the differential uh, and indicates gout uh, he's sexually active is monogamous so unlikely to be gonorrhea for example uh, uses no contraception he has no significant past medical history and here you get uh, an idea of past medical past surgical family history the patient smokes which is important for patient counseling at the end of the case drinks alcohol which is a precipitant of gout arthritis and something to counsel about and the rest does not seem to be relevant to this case we click ok so after you read the case introduction after you uh, go over the vital signs and the initial history you have now the option to decide whether you need emergency orders or whether you need to go to a physical exam once you start the physical exam you need to decide whether you want to do a full physical exam or a focused physical exam so now the first question we need to answer do we need emergency orders or we go directly to physical exam and the answer is we don't need emergency orders the patient is stable the patient is in clinic there is no need for emergency orders so now we go to the physical exam and to do that we go here and we need to answer do we need to do a full physical exam or a focused physical exam. How do we decide between full physical or focused physical exam? The answer depends on how unstable the patient is or how much pain the patient is in because if the patient is in severe pain, we wanna focus on the things that are relevant to our case and not do uh, an exam of every single part of the body. If the patient is comfortable or is not in severe pain, we can do a full physical exam. Sometimes the answer could be either. So in this case, I think it's not wrong to perform a full physical exam, but I think it's not relevant to do a rectal exam or a, breast, or a breast exam. So I'm gonna order almost everything except breast and rectal. Even genitalia might not be relevant, but since this is a joint case, gonorrhea is on the differential and you might benefits from doing a genitalia exam and neuropsych not very re relevant as well but again if you perform the full physical exam in this case i don't think it would be wrong but if for example patient has a suspicion of tension pneumothorax don't waste your time doing rectal exam or neuropsych exam when you want to focus mainly on the chest and the heart so you'll see that these exams if we click ok you'll see it's going to take 11 minutes 
So you're delaying your intervention by 11 minutes. So if there is something urgent that needs to be done, you need to do it either before the physical exam or you do a brief focused exam. And later on, after you stabilize the patient, you go and do a full physical exam. One thing to note here is that this time is in simulated time because there is difference between real time and case time real time is our time like how much time do you spend uh, writing these orders checking these boxes is our actual time simulated time is the time of the case so while this took us probably a minute to check all these boxes doing this physical exam will take 11 minutes of simulated time sometimes you you will see now we will put a bunch of orders and uh, it will take us sometimes two three minutes putting all these orders but in simulated time no time has passed the ccs cases are either 10 minutes which here is 8 plus 2 or 20 minutes 18 plus 2 of real time so be mindful especially in the 10 minute cases about your actual real time because eight minutes might not be enough to go through the whole case so you need to be fast in putting the orders and practice on the exam platform and here you can also see the elapsed real time and the simulated time so if you click ok you're gonna be presented with the physical exam that you requested again if you're short on time don't read every single word because otherwise you won't have time to put the orders the time here the eight minutes will elapse before you put all the necessary orders so screen things quickly but focus on the ones that are relevant to your case and in our case it's the extremities so you can see here warmth erythema ex exquisite tenderness and extensive soft tissue swelling of the right first metatarsal phalangeal joint range of motion is limited other joints are normal with full range of motion no joint deformity no warmth bilateral peripheral pulses are normal spine examination with the normal limits and looking at this quickly you can see that all the others are normal as well We'll click OK and we'll start uh, putting our orders. To put orders, you go here to write orders and you click order. So what orders do we need to put for this case? So to answer that question, you need to think what is in the differential. We have gout high on our differential. We have pseudo gout. We have septic arthritis as a possibility. And since the patient denies trauma, trauma is low in the differential of this patient. Generally for most patients, I order CBC and BMP. In this case, since there is concern for inflammation, I'll order ESI and CRP we can order foot x-rays we can order foot joint aspiration and we also need to order all the synovial fluid analysis that we need so we're gonna order synovial fluid gram stain synovial fluid cell count synovial fluid glucose synovial fluid crystals and we will try to click synovial fluid and you will see that you will get all the synovial fluid uh, tests and you can pick multiple of them to save time instead of typing each single one of course, we should not forget uric acid. We can also order PTINR. And one thing to keep in mind here, this patient is in the office now. You can see here the location is office. And we will probably send this patient home while these results are pending. So we're not going to keep the patient in the hospital or in the office or admit them until these results are back. We're going to send them home and when uh, we can schedule an appointment maybe in two weeks and when the results are back, we can also let the patient know. But meanwhile, you don't want to send this patient home with this pain that they're having. So you also need to give them something to manage the condition. And since uh, gout is high on our differential and septic arthritis, which is something that needs to be treated emergently, is not high on the differential, we're probably going to send the patient home with NSAIDs. So we're going to add here endomethacine. And since we're sending the patient home, we're also going to order counseling like low protein diet no alcohol no smoking no aspirin we're gonna consult them about medication compliance and hit confirm orders and we're gonna confirm all these orders cbc with differential you will not get this in the exam to pick routine or stat but the ul platform has that we can order routine or stat especially that the patient is going home but for this we'll just order stat BMP the same ESR the same here it asks you about the frequency since we only want it one time you can keep this box open CRP foot x-rays we already ordered the the foot x-ray so we'll cancel this synovial fluid gram stain one of the following prerequisites is required for gram stain so it didn't take the joint aspiration we uh, asked for 
but here it's asking me if you want to get a synovial fluid gram stain you need arthrocentesis so we need to order that the arthrocentesis first so you can get the gram stain and we're gonna click ok and do stat so you, so you can get some fluid from the joint and now we can get the synovial fluid cell count and the glucose confirm orders ok again synovial fluid crystals very important ok so in our case we need synovial fluid analysis we already did the aspiration if you didn't order the cell count already you can pick the cell count the same with crystals culture is important um, remove the uh, glucose is important gram stain is important viscosity is important as well so you can order all of these at the same time if you just type synovial fluid so you don't have to type all these words especially with the limited time of this case which is eight minutes plus two and click confirm orders we'll get the uric acid serum and the endomethacine here confirm orders The endomethacine, since the patient is leaving, since the patient is going home, we're going to order the oral version. Now we're getting our counseling orders that we placed, low protein diet, no alcohol, no smoking, no aspirin, medication adherence, but you can also pick medication side effects, counseling. So you see, we put the major stuff. Sometimes you put a little bit extra tests. That's fine if the test is not invasive. So if, for example, here you order an amputation of the toe, that would deduct point because that's a, a major thing and it hurts the patient and there is no need for that. But if you add a CBC or a BMP and it's not needed, it's not gonna make a huge difference. So in that case, you might be more on the side or the slightly extra tests. But again, remember if they're not invasive and they won't hurt the patient. Now we ordered all the tests we need. Since the patient is stable, we can send them home. So we're gonna change the location here to home, change location, but we're gonna schedule an appointment. When do we schedule the appointment? Let's say in two weeks. So now it's the first, it's Tuesday here in this calendar. So we'll pick in two weeks, 15 days and click okay. Confirm move. And now we'll start getting the results of all the tests that we ordered. This is the uh, advising the patient on no alcohol. If you see something that requires your urgent attention now, click stop now and do whatever you need to do. Otherwise, you can click continue. This is advising on no smoking, continue. Advising on no aspirin, continue. Counsel the patient, the family, continue. Counsel on the side effects of medications, continue. The arthrocentesis, they're telling you four cc's of yellowish turbish Fluid was obtained, request for additional fluid studies must be separately used, must be made separately on the order sheet and we already did that. If you get here something like 4 cc's of pus came out, that is an indication of uh, that this is this might be septic arthritis and you need to do something different. But here since this is, uh, it's not pussy, we will click continue. Now we got the CBC, you can see that the white count is slightly elevated but not to the extent that is seen in septic arthritis where it's usually much higher and here you can see that they have a star next to the abnormal result you can see the, the rest the majority are segmented neutrophils click ok continue we got the bmp everything normal ok continue we got the pt normal continue we got the x-ray results moderate joint effusion extensive soft tissue swelling around the right great toe suspicious for arthritis so nothing that will change our management okay continue we're starting to get the synovial fluid analysis many leukocytes need seen no organisms present so that is confirming our diagnosis that it's not septic arthritis where you see a lot of organisms we click okay continue we're getting the exact number now the cell count it's uh, 10,000 leukocytes, 57% are PMNs, we'll click OK, continue. Now we're getting the crystals which can confirm the diagnosis of gout arthritis. Microscopic examination of the specimen reveals needle shaped negatively bifringent monosodium urate crystals. So that confirms the diagnosis of 
gout arthritis. So this test, the crystals of the synovial fluid, is something that you will get points deducted if you don't order it. This is a very important test for this uh, specific scenario. We'll click OK, continue. Now we're getting the uric acid serum level. It's high and you can also see the star next to that. But keep in mind, it's not always high in gout arthritis. We'll click OK. Since we already gave the patient the treatment for gout arthritis, we're not going to click stop now. The patient is home. They already got the uh, treatment for gout arthritis. We already scheduled an appointment and we're getting all these test results back. So there is no reason to stop now. Just click continue. We're getting the rest of the synovial fluid analysis. Continue. Patient update. Patient reports pain and swelling of his grade 2 are decreasing. So that's great. That means we're on the right track. Click OK. Continue. No bacterial growth. Great. Because if that shows bacterial growth and you uh, there is suspicion for septic arthritis, you need to have the patient come back. The patient joint pain and swelling are markedly reduced. He's able to walk without limb. Great, that's awesome. That's on day five of the simulated time. Okay, continue and case ended. As you can see here, the case ended at the six minute mark. Although we have up to eight minutes, sometimes it closes before the eight minutes. Why? Because you already reached where the case usually ends. So if the case ends before the eight minutes, that doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. It just needs you reach that point where the case ends and now you can click OK and add any additional orders that you missed. You can add any counseling that you need to, to add if you didn't add that previously. In the cases of patient in the hospital or in the ICU, you can order any monitoring that you have not ordered so far. So this is an opportunity for you to add all the orders that you missed or you still need to order or the counseling that you need to give to the patient. But in our case, we did all the counseling, we started treatment, we ordered all the tests, so there is nothing else to add in this case. I hope you found this video helpful and made it easier for you to understand the CCS cases of the step 3 exam. If you'd like to see more examples on how to solve the CCS cases and also how to approach the biostatistics and the abstracts part, which are challenging parts of the step 3 exam, go ahead and check out our CCS course and biostatistics courses that I'll leave the link for in the description below. And by the way, these courses are risk free which means if you're not satisfied with the course we'll give you your money back no questions asked also if you need help one-on-one -on -one with a usmle tutor to guide you with the best resources for your step three how to build a study plan study schedule or just explain difficult concepts that are hard to understand go ahead and check out our 100 percent satisfaction guarantee usmle tutoring service and i'll leave the link for that also in the description below if you found any value in this video i would really appreciate it if you hit the like button subscribe to the channel and share this video with your colleagues who are also studying for their step 3 exam. Thank you everyone so much for watching and good luck on your exam.